Dankeschön. Komm. Morning, Hogan. Morning, Sir Arthur. Eyes down. On y va. Better late than never, Hogan. Uh, What's your name? Sharp. Sergeant. 2nd Battalion, 95th Rifles, sir. I'm much obliged to you. You did me a damn good turn. Now I'm going to do you a damn bad one. I'm giving you a field commission, Sharp. From this moment on, you're a lieutenant in the 95th. Major Hogan, meet Mr. Sharp. Congratulations. Capital choice, sir. The minute I saw him, I looked. Hogan says, aye, that fellow don't seem much, but he's a natural-born officer. Of course, uh, you know, Sir Arthur, he'll need a mentor. Hogan, you keep your hands off him. Hogan is an officer on, uh, uh <clears throat> on my staff. Your colonel will be informed. I'll request that light duties till his wound be healed. Good day to you both. Light duty, sir. Light duties it is, absolutely. See here, Sharp. Light duties mean staying at headquarters and being snubbed by snobs. How would you like me to find you something else? As long as it's safe, sir. That's my boy. So the bankers won't budge. Afraid not, Sir Arthur. We need to find Rothschild. I'd like to suggest we add that fellow Sharp to Dunnett's search party. I make a man an officer today, and you want me to send him into the mountains tomorrow. Have you no heart, Hogan? No, sir. We need somebody to command Dunnett's sharpshooters, and Sharp will be much happier up in the mountains than up in the mess. You know the problem, Sir Arthur. Not one of us. 
Lawford, let me see him. Lieutenant Sharp. Lieutenant Sharp, sir. Where did you get the uniform, Sharp? Major Hogan, sir. What's that, Sharp? It's a shilling, sir. The King shilling, Sharp. Our last shilling. London's late, the army's broke, and we owe the lads two months' wages. Next week it'll be three. Bad for the morale. Mm -hmm. And more of our Spanish irregular support will melt away without cash. What do you do when you're short of cash, Sharp? Do without, sir. You borrow, Richard, from a bank. Our banker is Nathan Rothschild of London. Nathan's brother James runs a banking service from Vienna to Lisbon under Boney's nose. Ten weeks ago, James set out from Vienna with the bank draft. He was to travel across France, across the Pyrenees, and into Spain, and make a rendezvous at a place called Casa Antigua. James Rothschild never turned up. But don't, don't tell me James is a banker traveling across a country at war. James is no clerk. He's done this before. We know he got safely to Tara Castro, and from there headed south, and is somewhere in these mountains. So, we're going to send out a search party led by... Dunnett. Major Dunnett. It means going a hundred miles into occupied French territory. <sighs> Care to come along, Sharp? But... Good. I... Tomorrow, I go on ahead, alone. Attracts less attention. Also gives me a chance to make contact with my Spanish agents who are out searching, too. A small special force of rifles attached to Dunnett's force will travel a day behind in case I need help. <coughs> That's where you come in, Richard. I want you to command the sharpshooters. Sir Arthur. The men you will be commanding must know nothing of this mission in case of capture. That is a secret shared between you and your superior officers, Major Dunnett and Captain Murray. Whatever happens, one of you must get through to Casa Antigua. You'll find them camped about three miles north of here. They like to live rough. They expect you at dawn tomorrow. Give this to Captain Murray. Major Dunnett is an officer of the old school, Sharp. He may not... Um, he may not approve of my raising an officer from the ranks. Yes, sir. He may not, um, mind his manners, so you must mind yours. Sir. Good luck, Mr. Sharp. Ah, Richard. This should... Will he do, Hogan? Do or die, sir. Oh, my God. 
Chosen men, Sharp. They may look like a band of gypsies, but they're the finest marksmen in King George's army. Oi! Soldier, who goes there? Lieutenant Sharp, 95th Rifles. Forgive me, sir, I didn't see you proper. And who are you? Isaiah Tongue, chosen man, sir. <laughs> chosen man? Where are the others, Tongue? In the barn, sir. Sleeping on sentries is shooting, Church. If I catch it again, I'll do it myself. He could have had you shot, Sergeant. Not me. Major Dunnett didn't like officers made out from the ranks. Come on, Isaiah. I want to see what happens when he wakes Harper. Bastards! Blessings oh. are garden, your friend. Can't you see I'm an officer, you bloody bog trotter? And I am Napoleon Bonaparte. Has anybody seen a new officer? Major Dunnett told me to find him. Name, rank. Patrick Michael Harper. Chosen man, sir. You? Chosen man? Show me. What's this? Liquor? Liquor displeases the Lord. Give it here, Harper, so I can destroy it. Oh, blimey, a bloody Methodist. That's best brandy, sir. Top of the morning, Harper. Lieutenant Sharp, sir, these are my orders. Sharp. Sharp? Are you the fellow that Wellesley raised from the ranks? Sir. These papers are in order, sir. Seems Sharp distinguished himself. Not here, he hasn't. Brawling with common soldiers. Won't do, Sharp. No, sir. <clears throat> Harper. You struck an officer. It's a shooting matter. I woke him up, sir. He thought I was an intruder. All my fault, sir. If you say so. But we have standards here, Sharp. An officer must behave like a gentleman. Even if he is not a gentleman. Yes, sir. We march in an hour. Form a rear guard. Form a rear guard. 
Full kit in five minutes. Sweet as a silent mouth, Cooper. Didn't say a word, did I? Strange officer, that. Sharp. He's not a proper officer. Proper bastard, that. Name? Cooper, sir. Where are you from, Cooper? Shoreditch, sir. Previous employment? By way of a trader, sir. In property and the like. Would that be other people's property, Cooper? You. Daniel Hagman, County of Cheshire. Bought you. So you're a good shot then, are you, Hagman? I can shoot, sir. Go on, then. Show me. You've defaced the King's uniform, Hagman. I can put you in a charge for that. Harris, from Wheatley in Oxfordshire. And previously? A courtier to my Lord Bacchus and an unremitting debtor. You're a rake and a wastrel, Harris. Is there anything you can do? I can read, sir. I oh, saw a tongue, sir. Yes, I know that. Where are you from, tongue? No, sir. Speak up, man. Don't know, sir. What about your family? Don't know, sir. Previous employment? Army, sir. Just army. Why are you here, Harper? Boneheaded paddy. So, the chosen men, eh? Well, I didn't choose you. But remember this I know you all. I've always known you. You and your kind all my life. All I know is how to fight. So if there's any man amongst you expecting a quick ramble through this war, now's the time. Be sure now. Right. Join the column at the double. Left face. Trail arms. Quick march. Is that way, sir? We'll wait for dawn. Sergeant Williams! Sir! We'll make camp now. Sir! Well, lads, make camp! Fletcher! Jones! Edwards! Fetch firewood! 
Robinson Brown sentries. Call on this, miss. Not you, Sharp. Take your men up that slope and see what the terrain is like for tomorrow. Well, you heard him. See? We haven't got a proper officer, so we get pushed about like pot boys. him off guard. He let you off light arms. Back in the village. So why so hard? He's just not right, Cooper. He's not happy being an officer. And mark my words, he'll bring us bad luck. We'll do it tomorrow. Los ingleses escondidos ahí. No, no. Oh. 
Perkins, I want you to protect this pennant with your life. Yes, sir. Never say die, Perkins. Never again, sir. They'll be back for them, too. Oh, keep moving. No stop until dark. Ese es mi hombre. Lo necesito. Como aliado, Conde. Y solo hasta Torre Castro. You're in my light, damn you, Hagman. I beg your pardon, sir. But it's Captain Murray. He's poorly, sir. Harris. Figure me this, Harris. Where is the bugger planning on taking us? Sorry to be so much trouble. You did well today, Sharp. I did my duty, sir. <laughs> We're lost. And we've lost Hogan's trail. You try to find your way to Casa Antigua. I'll find it, sir. Don't be too hard on the men, Sharp. How can I say this without offence? You see, the lads don't like an officer who's come from the ranks. They want an officer to be privileged, to be set apart from them, touched by grace. They think of you as one of them, Sharp. One of the damned. I know how hard it must be. Sorry. Of course I don't. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of some practical advice after I've gone. Um. Oh yes. Get Patrick Harper on your side. Is that an order, sir? <laughs> I want you to have my sword. Maybe if the men see you carry it. 
They'll think I'm a proper officer. No. They'll think I liked you. Thank you, sir. Bloody silly place to die. Captain Murray's dead. Bury him. And what then, huh? We are lost, aren't we? So we'll be heading south towards Lisbon and Hull. My orders are we continue north. What for? What are we doing up here anyhow? Did you ask Major Dunnett to Captain Murray to explain their orders, Harper? No, but with all due respect, sir, Captain Murray and Major Dunnett were proper officers. And now they're dead. There's no shame in going home. We go north at dawn to Casantigua. Carry on, Harper. We've been having a chat. We? Me and the lads. And? We're not continuing north. We want to go south. Aye, that's it. What the hell do I care what you and the lads want? Eh? Where the hell do you think you are, Harper? In the British Army is a bloody de de democracy, sir. Comes from the Greek word demos, means ruled by Shut the Shut up, Paris! Dismiss. I see Captain Murray gave you his sword, sir. The captain always said a sword like that put the fear of God in the French. We're going south, sir. We'd like you to come with us. And suppose I don't. And I'll get to Lisbon and report you. You shall mutiny us, Harper. Best if you come with us, sir. I go south, you kill me. That's it. Very well. Fetch my bag, Harper. Oh, 
Ah. Come on, Mr. Sharp, sir. Go on. Who the devil are you? Allow me to introduce Commandante Teresa, the commander of the guerrillas who fight the French in these mountains. And who are you, sir? Uh, Major Blas Vivar, Count of Matamoro. Major General in the Royal Army of His Most Catholic Majesty, Ferdinand VII, King of Spain. And you, sir? Lieutenant Sharp, 95th Rifles. Only a lieutenant? <laughs> Perhaps they do not promote you because you fight with your men. That man is a mutineer, yes, sir. He'll be taken back to Lisbon and shot. Tongue! Tie him up and take him to the barn. Spain and England. We are allies. What are you doing here? Don't tell me a stupid lie about being lost a hundred miles behind French lines, Lieutenant. We are looking for the village of Casantigua. That is all I can tell you. If you were French, I would take a knife and you would tell me all I wanted to know. But we are allies. Allies? Do allies keep secrets from each other? Lovers keep secrets from each other. Yet they still make love. Perhaps, uh, perhaps we can help each other. That is what allies are for. Good. I'm on my way north to the town of Torre Castro, carrying important documents from my government to those who resist the French. The village of Casantigua is on our way north, so we can travel together. Under my command. I thought she was in command. Teresa is seeing us safely through the mountains. Now, I'm the senior officer here. Do you agree to travel under my command? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think your men agree. You ask your men what to do? Yes. I don't always do it, but I ask. Don't you? Or do you just beat them until they do it? Agreed. But only until Casantigua. Good. We march in an hour. We must hurry. The French colonel will send the scouts after us at dawn. How do you know it's a colonel? Why not a captain? Or a major? Unless you watched us yesterday. Watched us die and did nothing. I'm sorry. So am I. Now listen. I'm in charge here. Not them. Not Harper. I'm in command. You follow me. Speak French, Harris. Oui, certainement. Je parle très bien. That'll do. I want two boards and some pitch. Hagman, I want a lantern, a pound of gunpowder, and a pound of old iron. Cooper, go on, sentry. And Perkins. Sir? Dig a proper grave for Captain Murray. Yes, sir. Cuidado. Es muy astuto. Sí. Pero sus hombres no le quieren. Out! That box on the horse. They never take their eyes off it. I heard your man telling you it was full of old documents. Uh, that's not so. You see, a lot of documents is a lot of paper. And paper's heavy. But they lift that box as if it's as light as a feather. Sir. Take him out, Tung. What's rent for keep out, Harris? 
to Fonston Tracer. Right. Come with me. Say a short prayer, Tong. Yay. I say yay. Yay. French scout, sir! About a mile back! Falling rifles! Why is that colonel chasing you? He's chasing you. <laughs> a full troop of French cavalry? A full colonel? <laughs> nah. They're after you. Why? Because of what's in that chest. Why? Because that chest is full of papers and the colonel is a great reader. That's why. I don't think you're escorting me. I think I'm escorting you, amigos. So caught moving. Look alive, boy. Saved you for the firing squad, Harper. Perkins tells me that you were once a common soldier, a sergeant. So I was. Strange. In Spain, an officer must be of the blood. Un caballero. Righteous but charming. A gentleman. Sorry. Wrong house, miss. Is that why you have trouble with your men? Perkins told you that, did he? Yes. He said you were a proper bastard. He's right. He may as well know the rest. My mother was a whore. I was born in a brothel. Grew up in an orphanage and hoped to die in the army. Right? But the boy Perkins says you saved the life of General Wellesley. And the Irishman, Harper, he says that when the English wish to honor a man of courage, they call him a proper bastard. You listen to soldiers' gossip, ma'am. 
Yes, I do. You see, we have two ears, but only one mouth. So a good leader will listen twice as much as he shouts. I beg your pardon, Mr. Sharp. Well, she's as dry as a bone. She sparks every time she does. That rifle does your credit, Hangman. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. Well, sir, the secret is not to spare the oil. So General Wellesley says. Ow. Damn me. I'm with leg wound, Hagman. Rain plays the devil with it. All right. Brown paper and paraffin oil is the only cure for a contrary leg. I has a contrary arm. On account of an argument, we're French use are. Oh, bugger it. Which we had <laughs> at the Battle of Vimiero. And which argument he lost. On account of me blowing his head off his neck. But it do it fierce of a rainy day. And I find nothing works so well. There's paraffin oil and best brown paper. Aye. All She's beautiful, is she not? Yes. You never loved a woman? No. Not after I paid for it. So she's like no woman you ever met. I think you should try to forget her. Because you see, she's no longer a woman. She was the best student in Salamanca. She came home to her father's estate. She was young and happy and hopeful. She read books and played music for her mother and sister and laughed while she waited for some noble men to come and ask her hand in marriage. The French came instead. She hid and watched all they did. She saw them blind her father. She saw them rape her mother and sister Maria, who begged the French to kill them. They spared her sister, but killed her mother. At the end, she was raped as well. When the French were gone, she buried her mother. And on her grave, she made the sacred oath. Death to the French. She plays no music now, nor reads books, nor smiles or sings, but rides the hills and hunts the French and hopes to die. But today, 
I saw her smile. She smiled at you. <laughs> it almost broke my heart. For that alone, I thank you. Buenas noches. Oh, that one's a bit sad. I'll play a reel for Miss Teresa. Yeah. Salamanca. Who goes there? Sharp, 95th, the rifles. Advance and be recognised. Pass, friend. Stand easy, Cooper. Can I ask you a question, sir? Where'd you learn to fight so dirty, sir? Same place as you, Cooper. Saturday night in the gutters. <laughs> Long way from home, sir. Never was much of a home, Cooper. No, sir. That it weren't. Did you volunteer for this lot, Cooper? Uh, no. Not exactly, sir. I was invited to join by a magistrate. Here's a Jew to all judges and juries. Justice and I'll bailey too. For they bound me to King George's army. So you to love Then it's over the seas that I wander To who stand through the red, white and blue For they gave me the old king's hard bargain So adieu to old England, adieu Untied you, Harper. That's Teresa, sir. What have you got there? Oh, it's just a little wild bird. I want it to fly away. No. It trusts me. But you're going to put it in a cage? That's cold. It knows it'll get some crumbs in a cage. I thought wild things like the freedom. Freedom to starve is no freedom, sir. Is that why you joined the British Army, Harper? Maybe. Can't be easy to be Irish. Wear the uniform of England. No harder than it is for yourself, sir. Having to walk into the officer's mess wearing the uniform of a gentleman. <laughs> if I dirty, Harper. So do you, sir.
Morning, Miss Teresa. Good morning. Good morning, Lieutenant. Morning, Miss. Hope you slept well. I slept safely. Thank you. Now, there's a woman worth fighting dirty for, sir. Danger? A small French cavalry. More sweat and saddle rot. They were here. Nonsense. Casantigua is ahead. My own people. They would have warned us. Oh. Smoke. Village on fire! My village. Ha! Vamos, vamos. No! It could be a trap. Is this the only way into the village? Yes. I'll send scouts ahead. Let my men do it. That's what they're trained for. Do as he says, Major. Cooper! Scouts ahead. Lively. Major, I'll leave you to secure your precious box and rifleman Harper. Teresa, you bring your men with me. Miguel, back on the Los demás, conmigo! <laughs> You are an Irishman, a prisoner. Why should you be loyal to the British dogs who want to take you to Lisbon to shoot you? Jesus, you took the words out of my mouth. 
I can help you. Give me the box. Right. Fine. But what do I get? You will be rich. And if I don't? You will be dead. Hmm. Well, you're having the best of the argument so far. Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm George Parker, travelling with my wife, Agatha, and my niece, Louisa. We're Methodist missionaries. Any more of us, lots around? Tell me, Major, why was the Colonel trying to draw you away from the canyon? Draw me away? Yes, I speak quite good French. I heard him tell his men to set fire to the village to draw you away from the canyon. That chest. You've lost that chest, Major. I will give you 100 guineas in gold and safe passage to America. America? That'd be nice. But you see, the King of England owes me last month's wages. And there's no way I could rest easy in America knowing that that bastard owed me a shilling. You would die for a shilling. That's what I signed on to do. You will have to do it then. It's a grand day for it. La un mosquée, une cartouche, un de vous va mourir. L'autre gagnera cette course. Chapter and verse, Rifleman Harper. Well, sir, I met this old fella. He was dressed like an undertaker, sir. And there were two other fellas with him, and they asked me to hand over that old box. So? We had a bit of a barney, sir. Rifleman Harper. You have powder burns on your face. These are the telltale signs of a half-loaded rifle. A common mistake. Understandable among raw recruits who sometimes discharge the ramrod in the heat of battle. But unforgivable in a chosen man. It's called going off at half cock, Harper. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Fall in, Rifleman Harper. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Wait. Do you not wish your officer to give you some high honours? That's what he did. He taught me to fall in. Lieutenant Sharp, I think it's better if you now take command. Get down! That fellow's the dead spit of you, Major. Something you want to tell me? What are your orders? Open that chest and tell me what's going on. I'm sorry. Not until we reach Torre Castro. My orders are to meet someone at Casa Antigua. But if they are not here? Your fellow countrymen need your protection to Torre Castro. Naturally. As officer commanding, I travel by coach. 
Just like a proper officer. transpired that my poor uncle had left a small legacy for the purpose of spreading the message of Methodism to the Papists. Well, Ireland was well spread, so it had to be Spain. So, here we are, Mrs. Parker and I sowing the seed. I didn't know Methodists smoked. Oh, it's for my lungs. <laughs> ich Luft. Ich <laughs> Gas. Sorry, I can't. Not yet. Sorry. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritus Sancto, sicut erat in principio et nunc et semper et in secula seculorum. Amen. Deus auditorium meu intende. Domine ad adiuvando me testina. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritus Sancto. Amen. Sicut erat in principio et nunc et semper 
et in secula seculorum. Amen. Rifles! Load. Now I know where they join for life, Cooper. <laughs> A meal in a monastery is a bit, um, a papist for my Methodist tastes, dear Major. The abbot is a Cistercian, but civilized for all that. <laughs> a toast. Death to the French. Death to the French. Death to the French. <laughs> Why do you not drink? I never liked that toast, Major. I am a soldier, not an assassin. Another toast, then. A safe journey to Torre Castro. Torre yeah. Castro. Torre Castro. Will you not laugh if I tell you a story about Torre Castro, dear Miss Parker? I love stories. <laughs> you have the soul of a Spaniard. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Duty calls. I'm a seat to the sentries. <clears throat> Excuse me, ladies. When will you find me? Says the bells of old Bailey. When I grow rich, says the bells of Shorty. When will that boy blimey? Shh! Are you in the dress, sir? Nice. Give me a picklock, Cooper. Picklock, sir? Catch me with a picklock? They're dead, Coop. But when you got out of Newgate Prison, you got another set. And that's the one the officer wants. Come on. Do I get it back, sir? Trust me. It's very hard to trust a man who wants to borrow a picklock, sir. So, you could not wait until Torre Castro. Very well, you shall hear the story. A thousand years ago, the Muslims swept across Spain on their way to Rome. My ancestors made a stand in these mountains, at a hard rock we call Torre Castro. They were many. We were few. We died hard. At sunset, my ancestor, dying, called on Santiago. St. James, the saint of Spain. Santiago came. He came with a banner of blood and a bright sword and slew the invaders in their thousands. And we dipped his banner in the blood and cried out, Santiago, child of thunder, child of battle. The Gonfalon, the banner of blood, kept in my family for a thousand years, lest we needed Santiago to keep his promise. What promise, Major? He's promised that he would come again if Spain were invaded, as soon as we raise his banner over the chapel of Torre Castro. Get to the point, Major. There's only a small French garrison in Torre Castro. The people of the town know the legend, secretly believe it. As soon as we raise the banner over the little chapel, the people will rise up against the French invader. Rise up? For a rag on a pole? Are you mad, Major? No, it's a legend, Mr. Sharp. And the people believe in it. As soon as the gonfalon is unfurled, 
Santiago will surely come with fire and sword. But it takes time to raise the banner. And before it is unfurled, the French will come with the sabre. Exactly. That's why we need you. Will you help us fight off the French long enough to raise the banner? You lied to us, Major. And you, miss. You picked us up, and we march with you. Fought for you. And for what? For a stupid superstition. For a... For a rag in a bag. Not a rag. But the last flag of Spain. Be damned to you and your rag, sir. My rifles march at dawn. South, sir. Good night, miss. Lieutenant Sharp. Surprised to see me, Richard. Oh, you've done a grand job, a grand job. But now, at dawn tomorrow, with the help of my agent, Commandant Teresa, whom I believe you are already met, I want you to seize the chapel of Torre Castro and hold it against all comers until Major Vivar has raised the gonflon of Santiago over the chapel roof. Seize Torre Castro? With six men and a straggle of Spaniards? Can't be done. May I remind you of our main mission, sir? To find a missing gentleman? Not now, Richard. Our mission is Torre Castro. Spain is a sleeping tiger. If the people of Torre Castro rise up even for an hour, the shock will shake the whole of Spain. Carry on, sir. Rise up? Do you really believe men will fight and die for a rag and a pole, sir? You do, Richard. You do. I knew you would not march to Torre Castro for a superstition. I'm like you. I don't believe in virgins or holy candles, but I believe in Spain. I had to choose between Spain and Richard Sharp. I had no choice. You did your duty. Now I must do mine. Keep him safe and I will light a candle in Torre Castro. Holy Mother. Why didn't you tell him before? His burden is great enough. Besides, if it ruined his voyage of discovery. Find the ball, close the steel, butt to the ground. Charge the barrel, spit the ball, pop it in with your thumb. Draw the ramrod, ram it home, put it back in its hole, Bring her back. She's ready to you wanted to see me, sir? Yes. Uh, Teresa has a plan that might improve the odds in our favour. I'd like to know what you think. Let you decide. Tell me. Torre Castro has strong defences. We can't attack from the outside. But there must be a way in. I will go on ahead. As a Spaniard, they can find it. No! I forbid it! Easy, dear boy, easy. I said I'd let you decide. Have the last word. Oh, forget it. He forbids it. Who does he think he is? Who does he think I am? Evening, Sergeant Harper. You want to make me sergeant, sir? Get a needle and thread. I need a sergeant by dawn. I'll never make a proper sergeant, sir. So? I'll never make a proper officer. <laughs> Indeed you will, sir. You'll make a grand killing officer. Killing officer? Ah, God love you, sir. I thought you would have known. 
There are two kinds of officers, sir. Killing officers and murdering officers. Killing officers are poor old buggers who get you killed by mistake. Murdering officers are mad, bad old buggers who get you killed on purpose, for a reason, for a country, for a religion, maybe even for a flag. You see that Major Hogan, sir? That's what I'd call a murdering officer. <laughs> Teresa! Oh, that Hogan. He's a murdering officer, all right. Damn it, Hogan. I wish I were down there. So do I. So do I. But our first duty is to protect Mrs. Parker. That's my girl, Teresa. Mmm, rica, eh? Te voy a dar otra muy buena para ti. Mr. Sharp, sir. <laughs> Lieutenant Sharp, 95th Rifles. Colonel de Leclerc, I have the honor to command the garrison in this town. May I present His Excellency, the Count of Matamoro. You know my brother, Major Blas Vivar. I have the honor of knowing the Count. The title of Count is in dispute between us, as of course is Spain itself. Why? You're a Spaniard. Why do you fight against your country and your brother? Politics. I am what is called a Francisado, one who supports France. Why? Bonaparte brings the light of reason. There are two Spains, Lieutenant. My brother's Spain is a monastery, silence and superstition. My Spain is a court, science and scholarship. If you were Spanish, which would you choose, Lieutenant? I am neither monk nor prince, so I would choose a tavern. You have 30 minutes to surrender. I suggest you surrender your sword and order your men to lay down their muskets. We don't use muskets. We use rifles. My men are all crack shots. We call them chosen men. They never miss. I will stop you raising the banner, but many men will die for a superstition. 
Ten minutes, gentlemen. Ten minutes. Saint of Spain, stand with the chosen men.
tilting is mine. that me sir give him yours harper yours and man perkins Take it to Perkins. Give it back. Under Major Hogan's orders, I held Torrey Castro long enough to effect an uprising. I deemed my duty done and thought it prudent to return to wait further orders, sir. You did damn well, Sharp. Napoleon will be in a fearful rage about Torrey Castro. Heads will roll, morale will suffer, which is all to the good. Because next month I mean to cross into Spain and give Marshal Victor a damn good thrashing. Pity about James Rothschild. I presume he's left the country. On the contrary, sir. He's here in this room, sir. Your banker's draft, Sir Arthur. How did you know? You smelt of Turkish tobacco. The kind you can't get in Spain. You didn't touch your pork at the monastery. And remember speaking Yiddish in the coach. Uh, sir, you are an edel mensch. A gentleman. Did you know about that banner, sir? Well, I knew you'd risk your life for the army's wages, but I couldn't count on superstition. Time to go. Hasta otra fecha. Sir Arthur's pleased his punch. So you say, sir? Say is it? And don't I have your promotion for first lieutenant in my pocket? Wells is going to take the army into Spain. It'll be bugles, battles, and bags of glory. Stick with me, Richard. I'll see you right. 
You'll see me dead, sir. Oh, that's my boy. <laughs> oh, well done, Pat. Well done. Thank you.